hello everyone welcome or welcome back to the channel and to speaking saturdays so today we've got a brand new set of questions for ielts speaking let's get started part one do you like rainy days if so why well i love the rain in fact we have this entire season this entire monsoon season which unfortunately has recently ended so i really am missing the rains right now because well you know whenever it rains like the moment it starts raining i feel really energized i feel creative i feel inspired i don't feel lazy tired stressed out all that just goes away when it starts raining and like this this year's fondest memory has been i was trying to compose some music on my piano and uh, i was recording what i was doing and it was so cool because i recorded myself playing but you could also hear the rain in the background and it created this really cool <laughs> kind of effect which is just yeah i might be romanticizing the rains a bit too much but i think pretty much all the people in my city do that because we have a really close um special relationship with the rainy season it's always fun and it really changes your mood plus i'm you know not a big fan of the heat so that's a great respite does it rain a lot in your city yeah it actually does so we have this entire monsoon season that usually starts mid-july and normally ends in the first week of october or the last week of september so that's always something that people really look forward to because well you know we've got really intense summer thankfully it's not too bad because you know it's a coastal city but of course summer is still summer and you know days where it's like 34 degrees 36 degrees can be quite normal so after you know a couple months of summer having all that beautiful rain uh and you know it rains a lot especially in july and august we get intense cool crazy rain where you know your umbrella just kind of flies and there's it, it never rains like you know uh vertically what i've noticed is almost every time when it rains it's always like in a slant because you know there's so much wind right and so you really cannot even keep your windows open because there's all this strong wind and the rain and you know entire living room and all the rooms just get wet so that's you know a bit of a shame i can't keep my windows open because uh, it, it usually rains a lot and also with a lot of wind would you like to live in a dry or a wet place this i think instead of asking okay should it should it be a dry or a wet place because i don't care either way i don't care if it's dry or wet but i do care if it's hot or cold i am the kind of person and i don't know if it's because i was born in november like my mom often says that oh you like the winter because you're a november baby and she was born in May, and so she likes warmer weather a lot better. I don't know if that's true, but <laughs> anyway, I I wouldn't really base my decision on whether a place is dry or wet. Although I would say I think in general, because you know I don't really like uh, heat a lot. I would prefer a wetter place, but then I don't really know because that's not the defining you know um, feature of my ideal place i think my ideal place would be uh you know it doesn't really matter to me if it's dry or wet what does matter to me if it's you know cool or warm I would, i'd prefer a cooler place because um like when it's super hot you just feel tired right thankfully there's very few days like that but in general i feel more inspired um more relaxed yeah when it's cool outside and so that's what i would base my decision on not whether a place is dry or wet would you change your plans if it rained i have been guilty of doing this a lot <laughs> i love the rains but only when i'm inside <laughs> you know how funny that is because uh i hate getting wet i know i know it's such a weird thing to feel right but i love being inside being all warm and cozy i have my tea or my coffee i have snacks i've got my work inside and i'm appreciating the beauty from afar but if i had to get wet oh no i'd hate it so i have changed plans of course there are some things you really cannot change for example if you've got a doctor's appointment or if you really need to go outside and get something done like a couple months ago i had to pick up my certificates from the university and well i mean of course it was raining but i had no choice i had to do that so that's something that i couldn't change uh, but if I had the opportunity to change it, I definitely would. I don't like being outside. Um, now, if I just had to take like a little stroll in the park or something, that's different. That's fun, right? Mm -hmm. But otherwise, not so much. Otherwise, I would just prefer to be at home and, you know, postpone any plans I have. <laughs> right. Okay. There are... 
Oh, okay, let's go on to part two. Describe a historical period you would like to know more about. You should say when it was, what you're interested in, what you have known, and why would you like to know more about it. This is a pretty cool question. I think some of you might feel confused by this, so what I'll do is kind of just help you out a little bit first. So, a historical period can be absolutely any period in history. It doesn't have to be 500 years ago, okay? It can be if you want it to be, but it can be any period. It could even be the 80s, the 90s. Nothing wrong with that. As long as it's in the past, but not like five years ago, of course. But like, you know, a couple decades, I would say. Yeah. So that would be any, any. I mean, you could even talk about like the Ice Age or Stone Age. Oh, I find dinosaurs really cool. Anything is fine. Okay. So don't think too much about it. I would say in speaking, the most important thing is don't think too much don't overthink i think that's where people really get confused i had a i had a student who you know every every week almost uh she would have you know two or three of these speaking part two questions and she would ask hey can i talk about this can i talk about this can i talk about that and you know she was always right i mean her initial you know idea okay i'll talk about this thing was always right but she just didn't have confidence in her ability and i always told her don't worry you know it's, it's you're doing the right thing you don't need to you know second guess yourself so don't second guess yourself don't think too much just talk that's it it's like weird because we often feel like I need to be so heavily prepared, but that's not really the case. So yeah, let me get on with this response. So my absolute favorite period in history is the Victorian era. Um, now I know that, you know, it's kind of weird because I love, I love being in the modern world. Trust me, uh, as someone who has to go to the dentist every month, I love, I love modern science. I love that you can just take a pill and all your pain goes away. I love that you can just, you know, numb you and you don't feel that they're drilling into your skull. I love it. Thank God for modern science. But I find the Victorian era really, really cool. Um, you know, they had so much good literature. Oh my God, a lot of my favorite books were from uh, that era. And not just England in general, but even, you know, in other countries. This kind of time period is, for me, just kind of so cool. Even with the fashions of the time. All the, you know, big poofy outfits that they had. The entire idea about mourning and memento mori. You know, remember that you too shall die. It's a bit morbid, yes, uh, for sure. But I just, I don't know, maybe I kind of romanticize it, you know, because we tend to do that. We tend to, like... Think about the positive aspects of the past and kind of ignore the negative aspects. Of course, it was not a good time for women. And uh, I mean, I acknowledge that. But I just find the whole, the art, architecture as well. My city, for example. I read this um, book where they stated that Bombay was the most Victorian city in the world, which is very cool. And I'm very like, I love that aspect because I love going to town and looking at all these huge towering really cool you know buildings they've got all these little you know spires and crosses and they've got all these you know turrets and stuff going on i love i'm absolutely crazy about victorian architecture my ideal home would be you know in kind of that kind of style and um it, it's it's definitely very goth when you think about it and i've always been kind of interested in gothic stuff ever since i was a teenager and i started listening to rock music then i started listening to more darker types of music <laughs> it's, it's just a very seamless kind of transition and in my own clothing style especially when i was you know still in college i definitely tried to you know incorporate elements of like victorian uh style into my into my own clothing uh, but i think yeah the whole culture the the um culture art you know poetry stories novels um the general kind of ideas that people had about relationships um all of that you know cultural mores and values all that i find really cool i, I do acknowledge of course that it you know has its shortcomings it's hardly perfect it was a pretty bad time if you were you know sick in any way or you needed any kind of medical help it was pure hell <laughs> i acknowledge that but i just find it very fascinating especially the kind of cultural output that they had back then it really lines up with the kind of um literature that i like to read the kind of you know like all these you know just just pick up like dracula or just pick up any any victorian book you'll you'll get what i mean so yeah i, I like to kind of live you know in that kind of 
of time for a while um but again you know i i'm, I'm let me let me like make it very clear i'm super grateful i'm super lucky i really count my blessings that i was born in the timeline that i was born in because of course things are much better now in that in any absolutely any you know past century we should be grateful for that but also of course you know there's always aspects of the um past that we can really learn from Okay, let's go on to part three. You think everyone should know history? Well, I mean, yeah, everyone should know history because you know what they say, people, um, what do they say? Those who don't learn from history, they repeat their mistakes, right? So that's important as a collective humanity as a whole. There's many things that we've done right and there's many things we've done wrong. I think even as, let's say, let's say you're a 60 year old person, right? You have a lot of experience you know what you did right you know what you did wrong but that only happens in retrospect when you're like 15 years old you don't know if what you're doing is right or wrong right so humanity as a whole like right now the only thing that we can really depend on is looking at the past what did we do right what did we do wrong what can we learn from what should we not do what should we do again right that's how we've been able to prevent world war three right because we learned from the past so yes every person should know a basic amount of history know about not every single thing in detail like the way they taught history in my school it was torture i'll be honest with you it was torture i really did not need to know all these huge names of all these people and tiny villages and whatnot a bit too much a bit too much in general but that's what schools here are like they suck the joy out of learning but that's another story <laughs> uh so yeah in general yes everyone should know a basic amount of history in what ways can people learn history okay first of all i'm just gonna tell it to you pretty straight i hate schools i think schools are a waste of time i think schools suck the joy out of learning and just kill all your creativity and passion that being said uh we are so lucky nowadays see back in my day we didn't have youtube and all this stuff okay we didn't we, didn't, we couldn't just go online and learn so much we could go online but the information back then we didn't have so much info now, of course, you can go online. I mean, the internet is one huge repository. But other than that, I think there's also, you know, just talking to local people, right? Uh, your grandparents, for one, they can tell you so much. And if you're lucky enough to have your great grandparents in life, wow, that's just amazing. But then there's also, you know, like being a part of your community. Uh, parents, I think, should really take their children uh, to trips not just to local trips but even to other cities states countries because you know you you pick up on for example you're walking and you know there's a there's a war monument for example right you learn about oh there was this war in this you know um decade or century whatever all these people died and why what exactly caused that to happen right or there's some kind of um building and it housed some kind of author for example what has that author contributed to the city or to you know the culture generally so learning i think through real, real life is much better but of course that's not always possible for everyone and for that you always have the internet you can, you can even talk to people on the internet there are so many great resources that we are if you want to learn something you are very lucky to be born in the right time how can technology make learning history more interesting well um you know in the past you didn't have so many options you had books and stuff and yeah you had a couple museums here and there um, but other than that, I mean, compared to now when we're really spoiled for choice, uh, thanks to technology, right? Because you have, let's say you're someone who prefers lectures, you can go to YouTube. But let's say you prefer learning through videos like animations and stuff like that. You can do that too. In fact, um, you know how nowadays you can create, like you have a picture of a person, you can make them smile, you can make them talk and all of that. So that's another really cool aspect, but also, you know how you can nowadays, of course, it's not new actually, but technology regardless, right? So it's, you can colorize old pictures and that makes it appear a lot more interesting, a lot more human even. So you've got, you know, all of this, but you've also got, um, you know, nowadays you have all these virtual reality headsets, you pop them on and you can, you know, put yourself in a different world entirely. So that also can be used in learning. In fact, people can, you know, enter that virtual world and kind of see ah this is what this place for example 
uh, let's say you've got a city what did this city look like 100 years ago 200 years ago you know you can experience all that it's so cool i think technology really caters to all kinds of learners right it's not old-fashioned where you go to school you have stuff in your book and you have a teacher so we're very very lucky in that way you think history museums are useful well of course they are i remember when i went to this uh, natural history museum they had all these little you know um birds and animals and they, they taxidermied them so they were real but they were of course dead but they were preserved very well and they told you okay this is found over here or this was last found so many years ago or even generally like there was another museum that had all these um coats of arms they had other stuff from battles and you could really see like this is a sword that was used right and you could see all the marks on the sword you could see like little you know um, pellets and stuff you could I mean there was just it's I cannot describe very accurately the kind of feeling that you get you almost like you almost feel like is this real like wow I cannot imagine that I am I'm literally looking at something that was used in a war or some kind of battle 200 years ago and it survived and I am now in 2022 2023 whatever you know in the present year I'm looking at this in <laughs> in this environment with other people where there's no war it's just crazy and I think that really helps, especially children and teenagers, that really helps them build a connection, appreciate, instead of just learning dry, dry content theory from a textbook, right? You get to see, ah, this is what, like, you know, this person used, or this is a kind of clothing, for example. Look, we found clothing of, you know, I was watching this um, reel of a museum, and they had this, uh, they dug up, a grave of i don't know they dug up a danish grave from i don't know which century like 15th century 14th something like that and they even made uh you know the uh the garment based on what they found in the grave it was so cool that you know people like 400 500 years ago they were just like us they liked fashion they liked trends they liked to you know decorate themselves just amazing i feel like museums really don't get the appreciation that they should and that ends our test for today so don't forget to click on like if this video helped you and i'll see you in the next one bye